guess what? I've got another Glove World episode for you guys. Like I said, I love Glove World. If I could go anywhere in the world that doesn't exist, a fictional location, I'd probably go to Glove World. It'd be fun. But anyways, here's some clips from this episode. It's called Glove World R.I.P. It's a pretty good one. Well, there she is, Patrick. It's time to say goodbye to the Tilt-A-Hurl. Goodbye, Tilt-A-Hurl. <gasps> Goodbye, Glove Drop. So many fond memories on this ride. I know, Patrick, but we had to be brave. I just don't. Why must Glove World close? Man, imagine if Glove World closed, SpongeBob and Patrick would be heartbroken as we just seen. Like, they would have nothing to do anymore, pretty much. But anyways, let's get into the first mistake from this episode. This one's actually like really funny and I don't even know how they made this mistake. Guests, could I offer you some lemonade? So as you can see, we're in a library right now, right? But why is there a window on top of the books? <laughs> what? Who, who made this mistake? Why is there a window literally on top of the books in the library? Talk about like a really bad mistake. Like this dude should get fired. But anyways, let's move over to mistake number two. This one's also pretty good. SpongeBob by taking a shower! But Patrick, it's Glove World! They're gonna... Glove World! There it is, Patrick. Glove World. Look at that guy! He must be the owner. We heard a horrible rumor that you're going to close Glove World forever! Close Glove World? Has the world gone mad? So Glove World has made numerous locations throughout the show's history, like all the way back in Rock Bottom was its first appearance, I think, and then since then it's had many appearances throughout the show. And one thing has usually been consistent throughout these appearances, and that's the entrance to Glove World. So take a look at some of these shots of the entrance, this is how it normally looks across other episodes, but in this episode, it's different. Like. It's not a crazy difference, but it's pretty different as you can see, making for a weird continuity error. I guess they could have changed the entrance, but Glove World appears in later episodes and the entrance looks like how it originally looked. So yeah, a weird mistake. Let's move over to our final episode of today, which also is full of crazy mistakes. In the episode Rock Bottom, Patrick and SpongeBob end up taking the wrong bus after spending an awesome day full of fun at the glove-themed amusement park known as Glove World, their favorite place. But once they leave, they end up in the abysmal zone of Rock Bottom. This place is the definition of weird or creepy, and while SpongeBob does escape the place by the end of the episode, he is trapped in the creepy location for a majority of the episode. Now, this one is a classic, and is probably one of my favorite Spongebob episodes ever, but it does have a mistake, as you can guess. When we first see Spongebob and Patrick get scared, for a single frame, one of Spongebob's pupils is missing as he blinks. Pretty weird. Here's a clip. Uh, that's an easy one. Patrick? Uh, just wait for someone to come out, and then you'll know. Back in your seat! Trays in upright position! Head between your knees! Your mama can't save you now! <laughs> the episode, Goons on the Moon, is a really good episode. I actually love this episode. There's so many funny scenes. I think even Santa Claus shows up at one point in this episode randomly. So funny. Really good episode. I recommend it. But this episode has an issue. And as you guys can guess, it has some mistakes, guys. It has two cheeky mistakes. Here's the first one. <laughs> Oh, shrimp. Now, where am I? Maybe this one? 
Are y'all ready to go nuts for some hokey hoo ha? Third time's a charm. Now this one isn't that big of a deal and it's honestly very easy to miss, but in this scene where Squidward is in the moon crater, um, the Krusty Krab delivery bag disappears and reappears constantly throughout the entire scene. It'll be there, then it's not there, then it's there again, and then it isn't there. And considering they're on the moon, I doubt like it's being put away and then being brought out randomly like this constantly. So this was definitely a mistake. There's some scenes where the animators forgot to draw the bag. And that ain't it for this episode. There's another mistake. Everything okay back there, SpongeBob? Perfection! Now we just wait for a gust of wind. Why don't we just push the moon back? Now this one is really bad because I want you guys to remember that these dudes are in space, okay? They're in space, right? So in this scene where SpongeBob is having trouble putting on a seat belt, we can see that he's barefoot. He isn't wearing any socks or shoes or nothing. However though, when they end up making a sale of clothes, SpongeBob now randomly has socks. Where did he get the socks from? Like, where did they come from? They're in space. This man didn't just get space socks randomly. So a bit of a mistake. I'll admit the mistakes in this episode were kind of week, but trust me guys, this next episode is full of wild mistakes. As any longtime Spongebob fan knows, this place is Spongebob's iconic pineapple home, a place he's lived in ever since the show's first ever episode, and it's even mentioned during the show's theme song. Well, this place has had a consistent design since its first appearance, with it featuring two windows. However, during the opening shot of the season 13 episode, Plain to See, one of these windows is weirdly missing, when there should be two of them. There's only one, there should be two, making for a pretty bad mistake in my opinion. I mean, I know we've seen worse, but how did the art team forget about how SpongeBob's house looks? Yeah, here's a clip. <laughs> What a beautiful morning. Time to check the mail and see who loves you, Squidward. <sighs> I wonder if I can return to Sander. Up next is another season one banger, that being Home Sweet Pineapple. In this episode, SpongeBob tragically loses his pineapple home and is forced to live with some friends. However, when this fails, he nearly moves away by the end of the episode to go live with his parents, Harold and Margaret Squarepants. Fun fact, this was actually both of SpongeBob's parents' first ever appearance in the show. But anyways, on to the mistake. We actually have two. The first is during this scene, as if you watch the antenna on the back of Harold's boat or his whip, <laughs> it is repeatedly flashing colors. Like look at this in slow motion, that antenna is wiling out, it looks really weird, like the colors are just flashing. Another mistake can also be found just before this, but listen closely. So as you can see in this shot, Spongebob is rocking this fresh little hat, it's a nice little dad hat. We can see it right here. Well, in this zoomed in shot that follows, the hat is suddenly gone. SpongeBob isn't wearing the hat anymore. But then literally in the next shot, boom, the hat is back while he's talking to Squidward. Talk about a messy scene. Here are a few of the clips. My house is back. The sheet's gotta be completely smooth and tight. You made the bed 
with my old saggy skin. That's a pickle, but hey, no wrinkles. All right, let's switch up the flow a little bit. We're always talking about SpongeBob. Let's talk about the Patrick Star Show. And don't worry, guys, I'm gonna head right back over to SpongeBob after this. I know not everybody loves the Patrick Star Show, but anyways, the episode is home eek, and here's the first mistake. Reef Wellington. <laughs> An A plus for you. <laughs> Next up, we have the... Uh... <laughs> Squidina's pickle pie. Aren't you gonna try it? You tried all my other projects. So this one is a blatant animation error, but when Squidina says, aren't you gonna try it, take a look at her arm as it's layered behind her sleeve. As you guys know, an arm is supposed to go through the sleeve, but in this one shot, her arm is behind the entire sleeve, which is just like a blatant mistake. And here's another one from this same episode. Your other project. project. <laughs> <laughs> in it. Excuse me. Huh? You've got something on your shirt. <laughs> Ready, please? This next one is just weird, dude, but when the teacher turns around to face Squidina in this scene, for about a frame, take a look at his tie, as the lines around it, like the outline, just randomly turn green. It's so weird, dude. It's just randomly green. What? Normally it looks like this, but then for one frame, it's green. Such a weird mistake. And here's another one from this episode. Three mistakes in one episode. Squidina, did you save me? How about we save Celebrate with some pickle pie! Is it safe? No! Don't eat it! Well, four out of five doctors can't be wrong! Tastes like an A plus! Wait, does this contain gluten? Were you guys able to catch this one? Well, when the teacher asks Squidina about her finished pickle pie, that's disgusting, a pickle pie, that is seriously so gross. But anyways, as the teacher asks this, if you take a look at his hand, it's colored white for a frame. Well, it's more of like a light green or something like that, but it's not the right color. Normally his hands look like this, as you can see, but in this one, they're white. And yeah, that's another mistake. Three mistakes on one episode, that's a lot. Let's head over to another episode with even more mistakes. Mistakes. In the episode Pre-Hibernation Week, Sandy prepares for hibernation, and Spongebob happily agrees to play some sports with her to have one last little fun play session before she goes in for her long sleep. They're not going to be able to hang out for a while. Spongebob soon regrets it though as Sandy puts Spongebob in all sorts of dangerous situations. And from here, the episode focuses on a stressed out Spongebob, hiding from Sandy to avoid playing more dangerous sports with her. It isn't necessarily my favorite episode, but I love the scenes of Sandy and Spongebob competing with each other. What I don't love so much though, is this mistake. During the scene where Sandy is getting mad at Bikini Bottomites, there is a brief shot where her neck is incorrectly colored as white, when it should be brown. Here's a clip. Man the night boats! Alpha team, you search uptown! Gold team searches downtown! Any questions? Gold team rules! Sides, he's yellow! Yeah, uh, here he is! Hey, can I go home now? Oh, look! He's up in the sky! Well, he's not... They must have gone to search some more. Our next mistake can be found in the season four episode, Krusty Towers, an episode all about Mr. Krabs coming up with a new business scheme and transforming the Krusty Krab into a full on hotel. However, things get problematic when Squidward quits and decides to return as a very entitled and rude guest. Now, to be honest, this episode is full of mistakes, but for today, we're just going to focus on one. It's pretty funny, but throughout the episode, it is established that the Krusty Towers has 17 floors, as you can see in this shot. However, whenever the place is shown from the outside, there are only like 12 floors. Like, count them, as you can see, there's only 12. Yeah, talk about a funny little mistake. Here's a clip. And why in tarnation would I do that? They got four legs that aren't broken. The plaque. Too bad we couldn't take the... 
elevator, but it is for guests only, and you are an employee. You think you charge that much for a lousy burger? Imagine how much I could charge for a lousy Krabby Patty! And thus, the Krusty Towers was born! Why would anyone stay at a hotel in Bikini Bottom? It's in the middle of scenic nowhere. There's nothing to do but get stung by jellyfish. That gooey little varmint's mighty hungry. <laughs> it may not look like much to you and me, but this here's four star dining to a snail. But old Patrick here don't seem ready to share his meal. <laughs> I'm gonna make this one quick because the mistake is pretty subtle and the mistake happens really fast anyways. The mistake can be found in the episode Gary and Spot and roll the footage. Locked doors are never a problem for a snail like Gary. Huh? Oh Marvin, you could catch every snail in Bikini Bottom, but the only thing you've really caught this loneliness. Hmm? <laughs> <gasps> He's beautiful. Yeah, so these two characters are Marvin and Alice, and at one point they go to a carnival. But a big part of this plot is that when they go to the carnival, it's nighttime. But if you actually take a look when they arrive at the carnival, it's sunny and bright outside, right? Like you can see it's sunny and bright outside, but if we rewind back to this scene, it's nighttime. So a really strange continuity error. And guys, I'm not even gonna waste more time on this one. Let's head over to another episode with much crazier mistakes than this one. Patrick Blake, let me kill a lot. Smith. No, I don't need any old locksmith. P Patrick, <laughs> no! P Patrick, die! P Patrick, D don't you think maybe <laughs> that you shouldn't? <laughs> Man. This card is fantastic! See, I told ya, we're back with regular Spongebob, and we're gonna be talking about the episode The Card, which has some hilarious scenes. Here, take a look at some of these hilarious gags from the episode. The episode actually really hits. It's a good episode. Ooh, Mermaid Man's bubble-powered wheelchair from season 12! <gasps> and Barnacle Boy's bunions! Holy scallops, these must be the most valuable cards in the world! Those cards aren't worth nothing. I wouldn't put those cards in the spokes of my bike. Oh boy, let's see which card I got. Is this a good card, SpongeBob? No, it's just another. Mummy Man says, buy more cards. Number 54, that's the best card there is. I can't let anything happen to that card. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy would never forgive me. Patrick, look out! <laughs> was close. See, I told ya. Also, I just want to say it's really funny that they did like a card game on SpongeBob. Imagine SpongeBob opening up like Pokemon cards. Dude pulls like a first generation Charizard. Holy cow. But anyways, let's get into the mistakes, guys. Here's the first one. You can have your card now. I hope you get as much use out of it as I have. Mm. My Mermaid Man card number 54, the special talking one! Well, what about these? So for this mistake to really make sense, I want you guys to take a look at this card right here. It's called card number 54. As you can see, there is a giant fist in the art of this card punching Barnacle Boy right here. Ouch, poor Barnacle Boy, dude, that must have hurt. Well, at one point in the episode, Patrick shows SpongeBob four number 54 cards at once. And if you look at all of them, they're accurate, except for the second one, as the second one just doesn't show the giant fist punching Barnacle Boy. I have no no clue like what happened here dude but it's just it's kind of funny because they're all the same card but just this one version the second one is missing a part of the art totally a mistake and wait there's more here's another mistake let's see if you guys can catch it keep those eyes peeled next 
Oh, no. Hey, Quincy, how's my favorite money man? Here you are, sir. Thank you. Hmm, uh, Quincy, this one is wrinkled. Uh, here, try this one. Hmm, uh, this one smells funny. Oh, come on. Would you hurry up? This is another weird one. So in the opening shot of the inside of the bank, this character right here, Incidental 29, appears after Incidental 107. But when the fish tells SpongeBob to hurry it up, Incidental 23 now replaces Incidental 49. When Incidental 23 was never even in the opening shot, this was just like weird. And this all happens in a matter of seconds. So yeah, definitely a mistake here. When Plankton invents a unique gas that can revert other fish back into babies and the episode Goo Goo Gas, he abuses it and uses it to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. He turns everyone and the Krusty Krab into a baby. But when SpongeBob accidentally causes the gas canister to explode, the episode ends with Plankton turning into a baby himself. It's a hilarious episode with a great ending. However, if we head back a few scenes, we can spot a hidden mistake. At one point in the episode, Plankton is captured and placed in a trap net. However, I mean, if you really think about it, what in the world would the net be tied to? It's just floating in the middle of the ocean, pretty much. Yeah, here's a clip. Net, you little nitwit. It was almost too easy. <laughs> no! I demand! You geezers, release me! Right after the party, the peeny other party! What? That's for calling us old! Our next mistake can be found in the fairly underrated Season 12 episode, The Dirty Bubble Returns, and it can be found during this scene. As Mr. Krabs walks away and SpongeBob pops in, as you can see right here in this shot, in this one frame, the dude is missing literally half of his body. Like, look at the space underneath the toilet stall. We should absolutely still be able to see the lower half of SpongeBob's body, like his legs and his iconic square pants. But I guess the animators were feeling a little lazy during this frame, as they only drew half of him, just half of him. Here's a clip. The toilet! Huh? Oh, fuck right, Pew! Make it sparkle! Okay, he's gone. Don't worry about those toilets, DB. I will clean them for you. Toot sweet, Mona Me. <laughs> Up next is an episode all about our favorite grumpy squid, Squidward. That being the episode, Professor Squidward, which is also a really good episode in my opinion. I actually laughed at this one a ton of times. Here's some clips. Now, if we can go for five minutes without having any further interruptions, I would like to- Ah! Hey, look! It's Squidward! <laughs> uh, Squilliam, everybody! He was about to say Squilliam! Oh, uh, oh, actually, I think he was about to say squid. Would you two numbskulls mind telling me what you're doing in music class anyway? Sure. Patrick's New Year's resolution was to learn to play an instrument. You told me your resolution was to sign up for an all-natural slimming, toning, and increased muscle mass program. It was. I traded with SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob, do you mind? There are other people here besides you, you know, and I don't think they appreciate you depriving them of my wisdom. <sighs> I'm sorry, Professor Squilliam. Okay, mistake time. So here's the first one. Keep those eyes peeled as always. This one's kind of hard to miss, but once I explain it, you'll get it. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it grand? What is? He's such a great musician. He doesn't even have to touch an instrument to be brilliant. This character right here is Incidental F9, and for the most part, she's wearing a dress in this episode, right? But when Fred says, isn't it grand, her dress is just missing. It's kind of hard to see because somebody's in front of her, but yeah, her dress is just gone, um, and she should go put that back on because this is a kid show. What's going on here? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Is there something seriously wrong with your hat? My whole life has been pointed in one direction. Tick. I see that now. There's never been any choice for me. Would you two income poops cut it out? All right, my God. I'm... Hello. We're with the local Bikini Bottom news channel. I'm a reporter. <laughs> So this one's another complicated one, so listen closely, guys. But when Patrick rides his locomotive into the trash can, Squidward exits the building and places the can outside, right? He exits through this door right here. Later, though, when both the news crew and the police come into Squidward's classroom, they enter the same door, that same door I just mentioned, but now it leads into a hallway. It's like the entire geography changed. Before that door led here, now the door leads to a hallway. So just, yeah, weird mistake. When you write these stories, you gotta use a little imagination, boy. Imagination. Yeah. Maybe instead of man watches pole, you could say something like, oh, Man, Mary's pole! We talk a ton about Spongebob season 1, 2, and 3, or seasons like 11, 12, and 13 on this channel all the time. But let's go smack dab right into the middle with season 6, the episode being The Krabby Chronicle, an episode all about a crusty crab newspaper. It's wild. What we're really here to talk about though, guys, is what you guys clicked on the video for are the spicy mistakes in this episode. Roll the footage and let's see if you guys can spot it. Well, gee, Mr. Krabs, I've written about everyone in town. Any ideas, sir? Surprise me! Give me a shocker! Oh, the wildest story ever, huh? How's it going, lad? It's a surprise! Did you catch it? Well, after Mr. Krabs leaves his office for the night and SpongeBob begins typing on the press, take a look at Mr. Krabs' office door, okay? It's right behind SpongeBob. This is important. It's right there. You can see it. It's right there. But in the very next shot, um, where is it? Where did the door go? Did like Mr. Krabs have renovations in a matter of like 30 seconds? I don't think so. I think the animators drew the door, as you can see here. But then in this scene, they forgot to draw it. And just like, how do you even do that? But anyways, here's another mistake. What a money-tastical day, eh, Mr. Squidward? Yeah, I'm just raking it in. I'm excited about all the newspaper sales, too. This next mistake is very similar to the last one, as when Mr. Krabs is walking up to the Krusty Krab, take a look at this poster of a Krabby Patty on the window. It looks delicious. I would love a Krabby Patty. But more importantly, the poster, remember that this poster is right here. As when Mr. Krabs eventually enters the Krusty Krab, the poster that we just seen is just gone now. It's vanished. It just, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, which is another condition continuity error, guys. You know, continuity errors aren't that bad, I'll admit, but they're still a mistake, and guys, we've got more mistakes coming up. Let's keep it moving. Don't have time to wait in line. Sorry, but I can't be late today. <laughs> ah! Ooh, what the? Hey! Ah! <clears throat> Sorry, everyone, but Mr. Krabs needs me. Oh, <laughs> Reporting for duty, sir. First up is going to be Truth or Square, which is quite literally almost a SpongeBob movie. This episode is almost over an hour long, but it's only really considered to be a special, a TV special. Now, it's a good one. It has a lot of good moments, but it also has tons of mistakes. So let's dive into the first one. Take a look at this. <laughs> SpongeBob's house. Oh, hello. Are you okay? Did you guys catch it? It's pretty blatant. But when SpongeBob says, are you okay in Patchy's dream, the right side of this dude's pants is just transparent. It's entirely see-through, dude. Like what? This one is a pretty bad mistake, guys. Like the animators completely forgot to color in this part of his pants, which is ridiculous. But hold up, guys, there's more. Here's another mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch this one. There it is. I'm coming for you, square pants. I'm ready. It's ready. We're ready. Let's go. Oh, you, <laughs> you little scamp. 
scalawag. Just having some technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh. Now, as any hardcore SpongeBob fan knows, a big part of these specials is Patchy the Pirate. I love this dude, which, fun fact, Patchy the Pirate is actually Tom Kenny, who is the voice actor of SpongeBob. Very interesting. But anyways, this next mistake has to do with Patchy, as when he's shaking around in the whale, take a look at this, his hand gets slightly cut off. It looks kind of rough, but this one isn't that big of a deal. This next mistake, though, this one you guys don't want to miss. Roll the footage. Oh, crusty crab. Oh, Krusty Krab, oh how I love you, Krusty Krab. Oh, 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 oh. oh, Krusty Krab, you've always been there for me. When I'm tired and hungry, I just reach out my hand, and there you are. Are you with me, people? Yeah! In that case, let's get some Krabby Patty! All right, so take a look at this. When SpongeBob sings, Oh, Krusty Krab, look over here. We can see the path to the chum bucket. It's right there, right? We can see it. The path is right there. But during this scene near the end, where did it go? The path is just gone now. First, it was there during this scene where SpongeBob sings, but then near the ending of the episode, it's just gone. Almost as if the animators forgot about the path in this last scene, which is totally a mistake. And guess what, guys? Here's another one from this special. Truth or Square has a lot of mistakes. Remember the day Sandy and I got married? <gasps> what? No. I'm freaking out! Mm -hmm. SpongeBob, do you take Sandy as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. And Sandy, do you take SpongeBob as your lawfully wedded husband? And how? Well then, I now pronounce you Sponge and Squirrel. <laughs> play I've ever seen. So for this one to really make sense, let's take a look at a general shot of Sandy Cheeks over here, our favorite squirrel. So as you can see, there's this patch of tan fur on her torso. And as you can also see, it normally extends to above her chest. All right, it looks like this, this tan fur right here. But if we take a look at Sandy in her wedding dress in this scene, the way that her fur looks is just different. The patch of tan fur on her torso just doesn't extend this time. Like, look, here's a side-by-side, -side, and I'm circling the areas, and you guys can kind of see the mistake here. Not that big of a deal, but let's head over to another special, guys, with even worse mistakes. These mistakes coming up are bad. Our first mistake can be found in the very new Season 13 episode, Say Ah. This episode only came out a few days ago, so it's completely new. But yeah, in this episode, Plankton notices that instead of fearing him, most Bikini Bottomites just think that he's cute and harmless. And as you can imagine, this really gets on Plankton's nerves. Now the mistake in question has to do with both the Chum Bucket and the Krusty Krab. As most of you know, the Chum Bucket and Krusty Krab are directly across from one another, and there is also a path running between them. Now, earlier in this episode, we get a clear shot of this path right here. As you can see, it's there. But for some reason during this scene later on, the locations have completely changed, with the Krusty Krab not being directly in front of the Chum Bucket and being much farther than it's supposed to be. There's like an entire path in between them now. But yeah, definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. When Mr. Krabs begins to think that he's overpaying SpongeBob, paying him too much money, in the episode SpongeBob You're Fired, SpongeBob, well, you guessed it, gets fired. Fortunately, he ends up finding a new job at Weenie Hut, a hot dog establishment. At first, things are pretty darn rough for SpongeBob, with him even being fired at his new job. But don't worry. 
In the end, SpongeBob goes back to where he belongs, the Krusty Krab. Now, I hate to be that guy, but at one point of the episode, SpongeBob claims to not know what a hot dog is. However, this is a blatant writing error, as if we go back to the season 1 episode Walking Small, SpongeBob literally steals hot dogs from Bikini Bottom residents, and even eats them. So, yeah, this was some poor continuity. Here's both clips. Hmm, there's something not quite right about this food, but I'm not sure what it is. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, not all of me. Hot dogs! Yeah. Hot dogs! Look at that huge line at the hot dog stand. I'll do better than that. Yeah. Let's go home. When Patrick finds himself appointed as the new king of Bikini Bottom in the appropriately titled episode Rule of Dumb, he completely abuses his power and pushes all of his friends away, including SpongeBob. Now in the end, Patrick realizes that he's become a monster and eventually decides to return the crown. It's a solid episode, and the mirror scene with Patrick is awesome. But if we rewind to an earlier point in the episode, we can find a little slip up. When Patrick gets kicked out of the Krusty Krab due to not paying for his meals, the Krusty Krab sign is awkwardly missing. I guess the art team was feeling a little lazy that day. Here's a clip. That is correct, anything you want, and it's all free. All free? Restaurant for free! King or no king? Are you gonna eat that? I was planning to. Why? I want it. Hey! What gives you the right to take my food? <laughs> Our next mistake can be found in the episode Shell Games, a really fun episode from the show's 12th season. Now, the mistake, to be honest, is very subtle, so I'm going to make this section quick. That way we can get back to the more crazy mistakes I've saved for later on in this video. They're crazy, so stay tuned. But yeah, during this zoomed out shot of Mrs. Puff, as you can see if you look closely, her lipstick is red, okay? It's red. You can see it right here. Well, in the very next shot, where we get a closer look, her lipstick has magically changed from red to pink, thus making for a subtle but interesting mistake. Again, we've got some cooler ones later, so stay tuned, but here's a clip of this one for now. You're the best driving student I've ever had, Roger. Kudos! <laughs> We have to move now! Punch it! <laughs> You're gonna work here! You'll need an official Krusty Krab hat! Uh... Say, that's a pretty neat trick! I'm gonna get some extra mayonnaise from the back. No mayonnaise! Okay. Coming in hot, first up is the episode Planet of the Jellyfish, which in my opinion is an episode that isn't talked about a lot when it comes to SpongeBob. The episode's pretty good. Of course though, it has some mistakes. It has two to be exact. Here's the first one. Whoa, look at all the customers. One Krabby Patty pulled the mayonnaise. Thank you, come again. <laughs> Don't you want a cute little jellyfish? <laughs> no, thanks. You can use this jelly as a pillow. Oh, that's okay. I, I have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> so take a look at this dude over here, Incidental 27. As you can see, he has a tail fin. It's right here, all right? You can see it right here. Well, the mistake is that when SpongeBob first enters the Krusty Krab during this scene, um, Incidental 27 is missing that tail fin. It was there in this shot later on in the episode when he's seen growling at Spongebob, he has his tail again, well his fin tail again. Yeah, definitely a mistake here, for this one shot it's just missing and that's not supposed to happen. This next mistake also wasn't supposed to happen, keep those eyes peeled and let's see if you guys can spot it. Ah, uh, look at him, the little angel. Good morning, sleepyhead. We wouldn't want anything to happen to you while I'm at work. You better stay in here where it's safe.
Did you guys catch it? Well, take a look at our favorite little snail over here, Gary. More specifically, his shell and the colors on his shell. As you can see, the shell is pink, and then there's like these purple or bluish dots on it, and then there's like this red swirl on it, right? All right, you can see it right here. Well, whoever animated this episode needs to be educated on our favorite little snail, as just before Gary is engulfed by a gelin, um, take a look at this dude's shell as that's not right. The colors have been inverted. I'm gonna do a side-by-side. -side. This is how it's supposed to look on the left. Yeah, on the right, that is a mistake. It's not supposed to look like that. Gary, you poor snail. But let's head over to another episode, guys, with more mistakes. Let's go. The episode Reef Blower is not only very short, but it's also a silent episode with no dialogue. This is the second episode of the show to air ever, and it's interesting to imagine if all episodes of the show were like this one. But anyways, let's talk about the mistake. It isn't that big of a deal, I guess, considering this is literally the second episode of the show ever, but during this scene, Squidward is shown sitting on a doorstep in front of his house. However, this doorstep doesn't actually exist. It doesn't show up in any other scenes during this episode or any other episodes after. It just doesn't really exist except for this one shot. I guess this isn't necessarily a mistake because it's from an early episode before locations were fully established, but it's definitely weird. And the fact that it doesn't appear at all in any other scenes is kind of a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. <laughs> Plankton is always looking for excuses or reasons for his constant failures, and the episode Plankton's Good Eye from Season 8 is no exception, with his wife Karen convincing Plankton that the reason he keeps on failing is due to him only having one eye. Not a bad point, Karen, but I don't know, I don't think that's the issue. Anyways though, from here, Plankton attempts surgery to get a second eye, but quickly realizes that he will need the teardrops from someone with two eyes for it to be successful. And from here, Plankton tries to convince SpongeBob to help him. Yeah, so the plot in this episode is a little all over the place, but it isn't bad. I did find a mistake though. When Plankton tries to open Mr. Krabs' safe, he tries to pull it open from the wrong side. So even if he knew the combination, he could not have gotten it open anyways. We know this because seconds prior, we see Mr. Krabs open it from the correct side. So yeah, here's a clip. Sleep tight, me little angels. Thirty-five left, twenty-five right, and finally, four left. Open says me! Hey, what gives? I was looking right at the combination. Why isn't it opening? What time is it? It is one minute to midnight. But that's when the fisherman comes out! Come on, Patrick, we gotta get home! <laughs> Next up is the episode Don't Look Now. And, you know, instead of explaining the plot for this one, it's a little complicated. I'm gonna just show clips to kind of summarize it. Here, take a look. It's a pretty good one. Hi, Squidward. Bet you can't guess what movie we're gonna see. Patrick and I are gonna see Fisherman 4. <laughs> Ha! You two won't sleep a wink tonight if you see that movie. <laughs> well, this isn't too scary. <laughs> the Fisherman's Hook! Get off the theater, daughter! <laughs> hey, good night! I just don't think about the Fisherman! Oh, no! I will not think about the Fisherman! Sleep tight! They want a Fisherman, eh? Oh, give him a fisherman. Aha! It's time for those lame brains to meet the real fisherman. Okay, it's mistake time, guys. It's mistake time. Let's see if you guys can catch mistake number one. The, the fisherman! fisherman! <laughs> we made it. The fisherman! Wow, 
What are you blackheads up to? We can't get home. We're too scared. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Squidward. You are a true friend. I told those mutton heads not to see that movie. Patrick! Are you okay? Yeah! Are you okay? I think so! So take a look at this shot of SpongeBob's iconic pineapple home from the first season. I'm kind of hungry now. I know I always say that, but I love pineapple. But anyways, take a look at it. As you can see, there is a chimney and it's always really been there on SpongeBob's house, like in numerous other seasons. But in Don't Look Now, during this one scene, um, the chimney is just not there. The animators just forgot about the chimney. Not that big of a deal, but that's a pretty bad mistake. And we have another one from this episode. I feel like you guys can spot this one, so keep those eyes peeled. We're not afraid of any old movie. Take your seats. Yeah! Seats taken, sir. Ooh, the movie's starting. So when SpongeBob and Patrick are about to sit down in their seats for the very first time, there is one crowd of fish. And take a good look at this crowd of fish, specifically the fish in the crowd. As when SpongeBob and Patrick sit down and we get a wide shot, most of the people in the original crowd have either changed places, which isn't that big of a deal, but what the real mistake is that they're replaced. Some of them are replaced with completely different incidentals. And remember guys, this all happens in a matter of like seconds. So this was definitely a mistake. The animators at first drew the crowd like this, but then they just drew it like this for some reason. I don't know. Let's keep it rolling though, guys. I have one more episode for you guys today that is pretty rough when it comes to mistakes. Let's keep it moving. The episode, Captain Pipsqueak, has become quite the fan favorite, with it featuring a bunch of cameos from characters we've seen in previous seasons. Plus, it also has a really good plot, with Plankton teaming up with a bunch of other super villains to finally achieve his Krabby Patty goals. Now, this episode admittedly does not have too many mistakes, but of course, you know me, you know Cartoon Cory, I was able to find one. As you can see, throughout the episode, Plankton gets his own villain costume equipped with a purple cape, a purple helmet, and more importantly, purple gloves. Now during this scene, where we see Plankton do a little dumpster diving while in his villain outfit, he can be seen wearing his gloves. However, for one brief shot when he jumps out of the dumpster, his gloves are missing. They just randomly disappear. Where's the door? Our next mistake can be found in the season 12 special, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. Now, this episode is awesome and pretty much serves as a homage to the show's history and features tons of Easter eggs and returning characters. However, we're here for mistakes. I mean, it's in the title of the video. So yeah, let's talk about two sneaky mistakes. It's easy to miss, but during this wholesome shot of Mr. Krabs dancing with his daughter Pearl, the P normally found on Pearl's shirt is incorrectly colored as white. When, I mean, as you can see in this image of Pearl, it's supposed to be purple. It's always been purple. So it being white in this scene is definitely a mistake. Another mistake can also be found after the opening credits. Now this one really is not that big of a deal, it's not a big deal, but we see a bubble transition, right? Which is technically a mistake as the episode starts on land, it's not underwater. We commonly only see this bubble transition when we're underwater, so the fact that they're on land and we get it is kind of a mistake. Again, not a huge mistake, but I've got plenty of crazier mistakes later on in the video, so stay tuned. For now though, here's some clips. <laughs> In the episode, Copy Bob Ditto Pants, Plankton comes up with a new scheme. He makes an identical clone of SpongeBob, of course, to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. But this doesn't go very well when SpongeBob, being the friendly sponge that he is, befriends the clone, thus ruining Plankton's scheme without even trying. Now, there are a few mistakes in this episode, but the worst one takes place during this scene and has to do with Plankton's computer wife, Karen. 
It's easy to miss, but the location of Karen's wheels actually change throughout the episode. In some shots, they are beneath the lower platform, while in other shots, they also appear outside the lower platform. Not a big deal, but it's a weird inconsistency I noticed. Here's a clip. More fruit punch, SpongeBob? You know, Plankton, when you invited me over, I thought it was another trick to get the Krabby Patty formula. Now I see you just love social gatherings in the workplace. <laughs> no, no, Sponge Copy. We don't put dirty, nasty things in our mouth. Spit it out. Our next mistake can be found in another extremely new episode from Season 13, titled Patrick the Mailman. This episode is simple. Patrick accidentally crushes the mailman, so he and Spongebob have to take matters into their own hands and decide to deliver the mail around Bikini Bottom themselves. This episode has a great plot and is really funny, so I recommend going and watching it when you get a chance. But there is a mistake that I know you'll miss. Squidward's house is directly to the left of Spongebob's house, right? It's been like that since the very first season. Well, why is it missing during this scene of Patrick the Mailman? Yeah, talk about an obvious mistake, it should be right beside Spongebob's house. We can't even see Patrick's house either, so again, another very obvious mistake. Here's a clip. You know where this spongy boob spurbonance lives? Never heard of him. Oh well, return to sender. Hey, what's with the new threads? I'm a mailman now! <laughs> wow! I've always wanted to be a mailman. It's like getting to be Santa every day. In the episode Arg, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs play a board game based on the legend of the Flying Dutchman, which involves an in-game treasure hunt. Well, Mr. Krabs takes things a little too seriously and decides to go on a real treasure hunt. And during the expedition, SpongeBob and Patrick actually find the treasure, despite it not seeming to be real, but Mr. Krabs says that all of the treasure belongs to him, due to him being a cheapskate. As you can imagine, this causes some conflict, but fortunately by the end of the episode, the Flying Dutchman comes to save the day and gives Spongebob and Patrick some golden doubloons. It's very funny. On to the mistake though. During this scene where Spongebob finds Mr. Krabs at his house, it may look as if Mr. Krabs is sitting on the chair, but like look closely and you'll notice that he's actually just floating behind it. We know this as you can see his other red leg behind the chair. Like, take a look at his legs. It's a really funny mistake. Here's a clip with audio. The episode Pearl Wants to Be a Star is a great episode. That's all about Pearl. Our favorite little whale wants to go onto the Patrick Star Show and do a little performance for everybody. But no matter how hard she tries, something always messes it up. As the title suggests, Pearl just wants to be a star, so she keeps on trying and fortunately by the end of the episode, she finally puts on an incredible show. Now I love episodes that focus on characters other than Spongebob, Squidward, Patrick, and Sandy, so I really enjoyed this one. What I didn't really enjoy though was this mistake. During one of Pearl's performances, as she turns, she loses her entire pupil, and boy does it look really weird, it actually looks kinda creepy. Yeah, here's a clip. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh no! I'm losing them again! Better kick it up a notch! And last but not least, our final mistake can be found in the very first episode of Season 8. Accidents will happen. In this episode, Squidward has a nasty fall and gets himself injured at work. But this results in Mr. Krabs becoming incredibly paranoid that Squidward is going to sue him. 
So he starts treating Squidward very different. He starts acting nice and treating Squidward like an actual human being and not just a cashier like he normally does. Now during this scene, where Squidward is seen with the Krabby Patty, the Krusty Krab menu is incorrectly spelt as G-A-L-L-Y grub, when it's actually supposed to be spelled as G-A-L-L-E-Y grub. Also, when the camera returns to Squidward's face and body, both the menu and order here signs are just gone. They've disappeared. I was at the register, giving it a nice shining between orders. When something caught my eye. A patty bun with 10 seeds instead of 11. I wasn't about to stand idly by and allow a customer to go without all his guaranteed nutrients and vitamins. The episode, I Was a Teenage Gary, is yet another creepy and disturbing episode. I mean, yeah, this show is for kids, but this episode had some really weird scenes that us 90s and 2000s kids will never forget. For example, the scene where SpongeBob literally transforms into a snail against his will. It's pretty weird, it's pretty creepy. The episode's ending is also pretty grim, with both SpongeBob and Squidward being trapped as snails. But what's even more spooky is this mistake. I know you missed it. This one is pretty complicated, so seriously, listen closely, as there is an error in this episode revolving around Gary's colors. As you can see, Gary's body is blue, with a little bit of green at the bottom. Ignore his shell, as I'm only talking about his actual body. Like I said, it's supposed to be blue. But during this one shot, it seems his colors got reversed, as Gary is green. And boy, does it look really weird. What kind of resort is this? Where's the entertainment? Oh, well, you are absolutely right, sir. <laughs> Presenting the SpongeBob Follies. Boring. This next one is spicy, and it takes place in a very underrated episode, that being Patrick's Staycation. I feel like nobody really talks about this episode, and while it isn't the best episode, it does have some really good moments, just like this. Take a look. Welcome to Star Rock Inn, sir. My name is Todd. Can I check you in? I don't know. Can you? Ah, uh, yes. Star, star, star. Patrick Star, room 801. Your key, sir. May I take your bags, Mr. Star? Well, I don't have any bags. Uh, Follow me, sir. Your room is right this way. Oh, dear. Something wrong, Mr. Star? I, I'm not sure I like the way this room is arranged. Arranged? One hour later. Mr. Star, are you sure about this? You know, I... Maybe it's the walls. It's an interesting episode, right? Now, let's dive into the mistakes, what you guys have been waiting for, what you guys clicked on the video for. Here is mistake number one. One Krabby Patty coming up. You are smoking. <laughs> oh, it was nothing. No, no, you're really smoking. What? <laughs> oh no, the Krabby Patty. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Star, your meal is ready. Patrick, where is he? So I'll admit, this mistake is a bit of a nitpick on my end. It isn't that big of a deal. But when SpongeBob gets out of the burned Krabby Patty, his chef suit had no sleeves. Seems harmless, right? Well, this is kind of a mistake, as in every other shot of this episode when SpongeBob is wearing his fresh chef suit over here, it has sleeves. It always has sleeves. But in this one shot, the sleeves are just missing. I mean, like I said, not that big of a deal, but somewhat of a mistake here. This next one, though, trust me, this one is spicy. Oh, Patrick! Patrick, what have you done to yourself? I've been waking up, eating, sleeping, waking up. I need a break from the hustle and bustle of my everyday life. I'm so exhausted. Please help me. Pal, what you need is a vacation. 
That's it! Did you guys catch it? Well, when SpongeBob says, Pat, what you need is a vacation, take a look at our favorite sponge's eyes, as one of his blue eyes turn white for an entire split second. Normally, SpongeBob looks like this and has these beautiful deep blue eyes. He's so handsome. But for this one shot for just about a second, SpongeBob's eyes are tweaking, dude. It's just white. I don't think somebody's eye would just be entirely white. That's, uh, that's not how it works. Now, that's definitely going to do it for today's video, guys. But if you want more content like this, click this video right here on screen, where I talk about even more SpongeBob mistakes. And guys, here's a little secret. The mistakes in this video right here are better than the mistakes I even covered in today's video. So click it. Click the video. Do it. I'll see you guys over there. We can hang out more and talk about more SpongeBob mistakes. Peace.